welcome back to all of our listeners who on in the In My World podcast. Uh, this is Steve Bradfield and my son Leighton. We do this together and we explore the journeys of people and mental health. And today we have a special guest, um, uh, George, who will be um, coming to speak with us about um, his journey and we're really looking forward to hearing about George and I know for, for Leighton, George, you have been a very significant person in his life and as his dad, I want to say thank you yeah, good, good. Um, for what you've done and are still doing in Leighton's life. So George, did you want to just say a little bit about yourself just um, briefly so we, we know a little bit about who you are? Well, actually, um, I, I started work um, in, in Fremantle as, as a, um, a freight uh, officer and then I got to write the tickets for the West Australia because every Friday night ships are sailing. And eventually I got to the point where I realised there were no wholesalers owned in West Australia. Yeah. And we started a company with a girl and Qantas bought the company. So, oh, wow. So I did 10 years overseas just flying for Qantas, doing all the negotiating and then... When I came back, we started another company. So I, I had a seamless sixty-five years in travel. <laughs> so from what from from what I've been told and understand about you, you were you're also a Vietnam veteran. Yes, um, and then you started a range of different businesses all over the world. So yeah, yeah. and you've also, uh, from what I understand, you're very much into uh, community services. You've been. Uh, doing all sorts of work with rugby and um, mentoring is a big thing for you. Is that would you say that's fair? Good, you mentioned that. You know, because at this age I could write retired. You know, but I write in that slot. I always write mentor. Yeah, because um, you know it's it's really important. I think now that older people pass on their you know, pass on their knowledge and skills to the younger people. Yeah, I- if they want it. That's right. And, and um, you know, I've always believed that, that um, you know, that we, we, we're obliged to, to... Pass it on. Just pass it on and, and just help people focus. That's and, so good. So, so even though things have changed a lot, you can't say when I was a boy because that's irrelevant. That's right, yeah. But, but you can tell them now, like um, what you and I might have learned in the Army is planning and, yeah. and don't talk about it, write it down. So you, I just sit with people and say, just focus now, just focus. And well, that's so good. It's so good to hear, George, that you're still pushing it at 85. You're not retired. You're still pushing it, and that's really good. Uh, yeah. You've got three um, nuggets that you're going to be discussing with us yes. today, and I've written them down, and the titles are It's Easy to Be Ordinary. I'm looking forward to yeah. pursuing this one with you, and so with Late, and Positive Attitude Regardless is your mm-hmm. second one. Mm-hmm. And the third one is uh, design by design eliminate stress. Yes. So let's start with the first one. Yeah. Uh, it's easy to be ordinary. Yeah. Well, I made I, I just that was a slogan that I just made up in the nineties. You know, because I, I saw people that had skills and talent, and they just they they just didn't go on and be creative. They didn't go on and be creative, and I'm thinking. It, you know, like um, all the skills we've got, all the education we've got, you know, lateral thinking, lateral thinking. And, and, and um, you know, you can either just flow along, which people like to do, yeah, or, or, or you can retire at 65 and find a young person, which I have. I've found travel people that are just a little bit lost with the COVID and all that. Mm. And then you tell them you're, you're on the threshold of one of the greatest travel movements ever. There's more direct flights now from China and Japan and all that. Get ready for it. Mm. Whereas they say, oh, it hasn't been that good. So get creative. Think mm. laterally. You know, then you just get them to focus because yeah. just the fact, you know, in my industry of travel agent, you've just got them to realise that they're on the threshold of a lot of seats and yeah. people, people will come to Perth and we're going to enjoy all these nationalities, yeah, as a state, we, we will enjoy that. But, I mean, how do I get these young people to, 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 you know, what do I have to do to be part of it? And that's 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 what I do. So, you know, easy to be ordinary was really meant initially that um, people retiring just don't retire, take your skills back to the young people. 
and because I've had a lot to do with the, with a lot of young people, mm. you know, I suppose that's really helped me, you know, say well. So to give everyone a bit of context, um, George Booth. The way I got in contact with George was the Fremantle Networking Group, and it's a large group of business owners and people from the community that like to meet new people. Um, and everyone is drawn to this group largely because of George. And George has told us hundreds of different stories about his past, helping people in the community, starting businesses, being a mentor, yeah. transforming lives. Um, we are all so inspired by the positive attitude that he brings, the lessons and the stories. We've all been drawn together for you and by you. And it's incredible the way you, your attitude is and how you always, you know, don't want people to be ordinary. You want people to yep. keep trying hard. You want people to do the best they can. And where do you think that, that came from for you personally? You know, we are talking earlier about inspiration. I think all of us need to find someone that will inspire us. Right. My grandfather had eight sons and one of them, Uncle Clem, was um, the CEO of Rob's Jetty, the slaughterhouse. And Shilkins, the, the wall people were out there. And we used to go every Friday night show movies to the orphans. Mm. But I found they weren't orphans. They were kids that were during the World War got set up north and the mum and dad never found them again. Mm. But so from that moment, uh, my family, Uncle Clem, you know, like looking for a, an inspiration, um, he just got me on the track that, you know, like always remember those less fortunate and mm. um, I, I, and all I got to say, almost all my life, you know, like look for them, and and then we had this wonderful five years together where, uh, come and I'll show you how to write a business plan, but you've got to bring me underpants, <laughs> 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 you know that, and that that was the deal, like underpants, socks, singlet, and the next day they're at St Pat's, so we couldn't believe that we had lawyers, bank managers, accountants all coming to our meeting. So when you when you you mentioned that thing about the underpants, that's because you were a volunteer bringing that equipment to them as a part of what you were doing. Is that correct? I went to St Pat's and said, "What do you need? Not oh. what I think you need." Oh, and they yes. said size twelve underpants. Well, yeah, oh, yeah, they yeah. wanted can openers. Like, so practical, very practical. Just meeting them right there. Totally, that's so good. And see, I'm a Rotarian. You know, for twenty years I was a Rotarian, but Rotary average age now seventy. So I I, I really thought I could not take Leighton to become a, a Rotarian, even though I'm very proud to have been yeah. and I got all my awards. That's okay. But I wanted to start something and Rotary did give us their endorsement um, where younger people could meet the lawyers and the doctors and the in the room. So mentors and movers, I had them in the room yeah. and they hardly ever missed a meeting. That's so good. And the end result was underpants the next day down at St Pat's. Yeah, and um, that's just a, an example. It's easy to be ordinary, or you can start thinking your way of how, what more can I do? Yeah, that's so good. What more can I do just to, to help those less fortunate? And I, I don't mean people laying around on the street. I just noticed one day somebody came in while I was at St Pat's and said, uh, he almost had his hand over his eyes. I just need food. He wasn't homeless or anything. Mm. He just had a family. So my, it, broad, yeah. it broadened my thought about he's not homeless, you know. It, it, this this fellow yeah. just wants to feed his kids. Wow. And, mm. yeah. So yeah. That, that reminds me um, of understanding the different stories homeless people are going through. Today I was just getting a coffee down at Good Things and a guy just came up to me and he said, how, I said, I got eye contact with him and I said, how are you going? And he said, do you really want to know? And I said, yeah. And I sat down with him and he just told me that that evening he was, he tried to kill himself. And then today was the one day he was going to spend exploring whether life was worth living again. And he said, people just look at him like he doesn't exist, like he's invisible yep. and he's a human. And these wow. are the kind of people that you're helping every day through yeah. St. Pat's. These are the, these are the people you're helping um, through the Vietnam veterans where you're taking people over to Vietnam. Yeah. This is, these are the people that you're, you're transforming their lives. And, yep. and I spent the morning with him and, and took him around and he just, 
he told me that he wanted to you know give life a go again yeah. and and push through another day so you know that's, you do have an effect on these kind of people that's and that's good and no doubt no doubt you you give them you give them dignity yeah, and, and and if you stay with them long enough, you you prevent. I've already climbed through the window where the guy did himself in, and saved him. You know, like, like yeah, it, 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 you know, and you just say, how far down do you have to go? Where, where yeah, you, you right. say life is not worth living. So, George, you you mentioned your your second nugget was. Um, positive attitude regardless yeah i'm i'm sensing that as a real theme for you and your life yeah tell me more tell us more about that the second one yeah yeah, i've grown up where um i try to avoid negative thinking you know because think where we live think what we've got you know our families the whole lot yeah if people people can't you know, know i know some people have a really tragic time but I always see the positive, like uh, I mentioned to you earlier, I'm in hospital every Monday as part of a, a condition I have, but they're compassionate and they're efficient. And I just think, so that's what I do Monday. I, I, I don't wallow in the negativity of it. And then, you know, I can always, 90% of the time, I can see the positive things in life. Mm. And, and, I, and, you know, when people talk negative, it's quite sad because... Um, they're really not. They're really not thinking that. Yeah, look where I am, and look what I could do. You know, like um, yeah. George, I'm just interested to know, given your story with Army, and obviously I have uh, a smaller story in Army. Yeah, um, yeah. There's probably veterans. Uh, we know that there has been many thousands of veterans in modern day society mm. that have gone all over the world, whether it's in conflict or peacekeeping. And they may be struggling with some of their mindsets. Would you, as an older man who's been the journey, what advice would you have, even emergency services workers, police people, all Mm -hmm. all people who seen things, what would you say? I'd just be interested to know. That's putting you on the spot. I started taking the Vietnam vets back to Vietnam with their wives and they had not told the story. Some of the stories are just... Too, too bad to even, you know, we are not conditioned for war. We are not conditioned no. for war. And a lot of these people, like I remember my dad coming back, you know, World War II and, I, and, and they just went to the pub. They just yeah. went to the pub and talked about it. But the Vietnam vet guys uh, t- uh, tend to hold it in. I just find out they hold it in. Yeah. And then when I took them to Vietnam with their wives and said, why don't you just tell us your story? You know they were they were just so they were so sad, and people feeling guilty as though it was my fault. And you say it wasn't yeah. your fault, and 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 that's okay. That's war. That's war. Yeah, I'm, I was a conscript, you know, and and also mm. I volunteered to go as well, you know. So um, we're just not conditioned, you know, for the result of battle, and and a lot of guys mentally try to hold it in and and not not tell the, the family why I'm like I am. When you let them tell their story, everyone says, oh, oh, oh goodness me, you know, that, that yeah. you, you've been sitting on that. So I got them to tell their stories and, you know, I, I hope I helped them, you know, like just mm. get the guilt or the, or the, or the feeling of war. And how has uh, the impact of the war influenced you now in your current mental state? You mentioned earlier that you get a call a week from the Vietnam veteran association yeah, how is that process for you well, well actually I, I i can't you know i am so um you know dva calling me every other week um to see if i'm okay i find the blanket around me you know um as a veteran is um amazing it's amazing support you, the, the support is amazing and i i'll probably only use half of it but you know um they call me to see if i'm okay and and um mm. You know, I'm able to talk to them about what I have seen. So mm. I saw a guy last week out at the mm. yeah, and they they helped me. That's um, it actually makes me feel a little emotional hearing that, being someone who's a, a chaplain in the army oh. for some time, and it's nice to know that that is happening still, oh. and and that. It is available for people. I'm sorry about the uh, tears. I wasn't expecting yeah, that, George. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is what we're about here. But, <laughs> but um, I think that's I think that's really a positive message that if people uh, need support, 
yeah. that, that there are support options in all sorts of associations wherever you're yeah. from and yeah. that it's good to talk to people you feel safe to do so yeah, yeah. and that you've seen the benefit. And, yeah. And what, what kind of experience, Steve, did you have with you know DVA and getting support when you went to the army afterwards? I found it very difficult as a chaplain because mm-hmm. the support people weren't really used to supporting the support people. Yeah, yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. So it does. They didn't know what to do with me. Uh, no. Nah. And I felt very isolated. Yeah, yeah. Um, so for me, that was really tough. Yeah. Who cares for the carers, yeah. they say. Yeah, um, yeah. And sometimes, yeah, it's not where you you think it comes from it yeah. comes from different places yeah. but it, i'm just really encouraged to see that and i know having worked in the firefighter space yeah same. um the, the support there and I, I have a cousin who's in police um well-being and support and yeah. and it's really good to to see that that is going so to work um thank you um so what would both of your messages be to men out there who potentially have support available but they're afraid to actually engage with that actually i think that's a really good question that's a good question Mm. because you can either use it or not use it and um you know that that is a very good question i reckon there's guys out there that that don't realize that dva you know if you go to them and explain you're in a difficult situation trust me someone will ring you and they'll direct you and um yeah, that's a really good question. What about you, Steve? What's your message to people, even young men and women who would potentially want to go to a psychologist or a psychiatrist mm-hmm. or a counsellor even, just to speak about what's going on for them? Um, I remember speaking to a psychiatrist once when they were assessing whether or not I had a permanent injury, <laughs> you know, how they do that. And... Um, there was I was really nervous about it mm. and I was sitting with this this psychiatrist and there was something about him that um, was different and he listened to me he heard me well good and it was a, a it was a really nice uh, surprise and I later met him 10 years ago at a 20 talk event and told him there was something different about you, and he said to me, "Yes, yeah, Steve, because I got PTSD as well." All right, okay. Uh, from listening to people and my story, his yeah. own story. So, don't. My advice is, don't underestimate the story of the person who may be listening to you. Yeah. Just because they haven't been where you've been doesn't mean that they don't have things to value you, or that they can't listen to you from the story that they have mm. that's my advice yeah um so mm. don't hold back thinking that yep. it's just a bunch of people that are intellectuals or yeah it, it, there's more to people mm. than you think i think that was so. really that was a really good comment because if you say to somebody go to a counselor they yeah. say i don't need a counselor yeah i went to a counselor i just got to the stage where I thought, even i will go to a counselor and, and it's quite so, – just sorted me out. What, yeah. I, what I've noticed is a lot of young people, especially – or just people in general, don't think that their problems are enough. To see a, a psychologist or a counsellor, they think, oh, no, I can just – you know, there's, there's other people with issues much worse than me. And yeah. they put it off and they put mm, it off. And That's good. And, and once you actually get in there and you, yeah. you, you have that first session where you – you blurt out your whole story. They don't really talk that much. And then after the third to the fifth session, mm-hmm. you start unpacking your past and connecting with your psychologist, whether you do connect or not, is a different story. And that's, you know, we definitely do recommend, you know, shopping around and finding one that aligns with you. But once you do, it's just like un- unraveling a book and a story with this person and it, and it helps you find out who you really are. So if you are thinking about it and you're listening... You know, jump on your computer right now. Jump on your laptop and and book at one session. Um, it's, you know, it might be a hundred dollars, but it's definitely worth your well, time. If you if you're a veteran or you have different services, those those things are free anyway. So there's no real thing yeah. stopping you. Yeah. But that good, great question. And no, I want. I thought that was an excellent. That was a good question. No, no but you know, if if I left a message, it would it would be saying, get over it. Go to the counsellor. You know, yeah. don't don't feel that that um, 
that people will say you're heading off to the counsellor because these people unravel the stress and, and complication in your life. So I think it's a great question, you know, if in doubt, you know, go to the counsellor and um, that's, I, that's I advocate that. That's good, good message, absolutely. Positive. Your last, uh, your last nugget, um, and we have a half an hour cap <laughs> for this uh, for this program. But your last um, nugget was by design eliminate stress. I love that. Yeah. Tell us more. Well, well, just that um, as you go through life, you know, you you um, you tend to try and do everything, you know, and and and, and you drive. It makes you become. Um, I'm into the rugby league and I'm into the network and I'm 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 doing a. We did a concussion study, a serious concussion study. Yeah. So I'm always out there trying to be more involved in life. And how old are you? I'm 85. 85. No, no, but that 85 coming up. But you know, like I don't see that. I just see that. Um, you know, while whilst I have contact with younger people, and you know, and you're getting into the real world. You know, um, yeah, I just uh, I think it's important that we, you know, work together. So you say um, by design eliminate stress. You mentioned before how you you started to wind back a few things. Tell yeah. us why. No, what, well, actually, what do you mean by? But well, just you know, like in the end, yeah, with my age, uh, I was running the network group on my own, and um, I do believe, like Leighton said, you know, people trusted me and they came to those meetings. But be, you know, but to be the patron of rugby league, which I really take quite seriously, because my goal there is to make make them better persons, and that's what yeah. they say. They say that the first yeah. grade team just say, "You have made me a better person." Yeah. So sport, you know, fitness and and attitudes, which you can lay on them with yeah. a good coach, and we got two hundred and fifty juniors. You know, so you can let them grow up. Oh, so positive, good. yeah. And, so, and how has the stress from running all these different groups and events and winning all these awards? How has that physically presented in your life and mentally? What What would you experience? Well, well what you know, what it is, I mentioned that um, the network group. You know, I I gave it up. You know, sadly, I gave it up. But as soon as I gave it up, I realised I don't lay awake thinking who's going to be the speaker next month. Yeah. So you've noticed a definite or well, by design by design yeah. i put it all up there on the wall what am i involved in what stresses me out yeah. and, and that it, it doesn't matter what age you are what stresses me out and um you look at you look at the board and just say well i'm doing the network and i, and I am laying awake wondering who the speaker will be next month and um i sadly i gave that up so by design I've, i don't go to golf for three months now and, and I just find I'm not running around. Where's my shoes? Where's the, where's the clubs? Where's the? So it's helping so, you with your stress, and it's helping you with your health. So by design, I'd just say, you know, we've got to address where we're at and things that stress us. You know, we've just got to we just got to look at that. You know, um, mm. things that really stress us. When you look at society as a whole, you know, what what's your perspective on young people with stress at the moment? Are you seeing a lot of stress? Are you seeing a lot of stress from just the general public? You don't. I, you don't even have to be amongst them to to realise that that you know what's happened to them. Like you see these kids with the phones; they just walk around with the phones, and um, you, you know, I just I just look at it thinking times have changed. Artificial mm. intelligence is here. Mm. You know, like um, chat GPT and all that sort of yeah. stuff. Like these kids have got to learn to go from where they are into, into AI. And um, and then uh, socially, you'll always have a problem socially that some, yeah. someone doesn't like me and all that. And the, the phone doesn't help. No. And I, I just think a lot of these kids are, um, you know, they're stressed out just through the phone yeah so different stresses for different generations yeah 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 so you, you've got to go and find somewhere like i said rugby league's my code you've got to go and find somewhere where people you know socialize with you yeah. that you're not isolated and that's, um, that's great yeah um Leighton, i've just realized <laughs> that we forgot to do the mystery question <gasps> from our previous guest. You're being chair today, but mate. You I know, and I've realised that... Um, <laughs> time's up. Yeah, time's up soon. But 
Um, I just I will give you the mystery question right. quickly, mm-hmm. uh, and this is from our previous uh, guest. Yeah. And if you just read that question out, George, that'd be fantastic. Yeah, it says, "What does anger teach us?" Yeah, what so does it teach us? What does it teach us, George? It's, it's quite sad that there's a lot of angry people around. Yeah, it, you know, and it's it's a condition. You know, I can get. As I get older, the, the people get more grumpy and all that. Um, <laughs> no, but but it doesn't. It just. I mean, it doesn't teach us anything. It just. It, it tells us that um, you've got to control your, your feelings because you know anger is a bad is a bad trait. You know, yeah, it and, can be it can be destructive. Oh, destructive, yeah. And I mean, um, you know, regrettably, as people get older. I just find that they get more angry, you know, uh, as they as as they go through life. It's it's not a good trait, and um, it just it's, it's, there's no lesson in it other than to avoid it, you know, um, to try and avoid. And when it. was the last time you got angry, George? Oh, I, actually, recently. <laughs> like, no, Let's no, hear it. <laughs> no, no, but recently, like I find as I get older, I'm on medication and the whole lot. What's happening to me? I just become a bit more grumpy. Yeah, and it's it's not anger, but it's just it's just saying, I, I just just address address um, um, this anger, yeah, address it, yeah, because um, it's it's very easy to get angry yeah. depending on what your situation is. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, so it's not teaching us anything. It's just saying try and control it. Very good, Leighton. Um, we're just in our final uh, minutes now, and I just wondered if there's any final questions that you wanted to ask. George, George, or just final question. Um, didn't really have any prepared, to be honest with you. Did you? No, I did not. George, can I just ask you a question? Yeah, go. How would you like to be remembered? I'd like to be remembered as someone that that had good values. You yeah. know that I was honest. You could trust me. I yeah. could. I, you know, I had a lot of staff, and I relating to them, treating yeah. them with dignity, training them. Yeah, you know, so they. So they grew in life. So, so you know, yeah. I want to be remembered at, uh, as somebody that uh, yeah gave people dignity and, and you know, through life, and well, even and even on the street, you know, I still well, like, you know what? what? It's living on in 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 people like yeah. him who he you just heard this morning what he was doing, and um, great story, George. We want to thank you for coming in today. It has been fantastic. From everyone you've impacted in Australia, we want to say thank you. Yeah, thank you know, you, you've, you've left an imprint on me. You've left an imprint on a lot of people that I know. And we draw so much energy from you. Your intellectual cu- curiosity, your passion for people, yeah, good your, your passion for the world. Yeah. You know, you get people excited to want to be better people. Yeah. And, you know, we talked a little bit about your story today, but there's so much more out there. And I just want to say thank you. Thanks, Leighton. Yeah, you know, I've been so pleased to have met you because, um, you know, uh, the Leightons out there that that really are doing good, you know, um, that's a good example. It's a good encouragement for you. Well, it's a good example, you know, that that, that just you can do it. You can do it. Yeah, that's you good. And can. that's a great message to leave us with. So, uh, George, thanks again. No and um, we will uh, leave, get you to leave a question for our next guest shortly. So thanks, everyone, for listening. And um, we'll see you on the next episode. Thank like, you. comment and subscribe. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you.